Hello, welcome to Scratch 3D Printing. Today is a very special video. I will be continuing my project of making a turbocharger. And today's video, I can't believe I'm actually going to be saying this for the first time in my life. I never thought I would be able to say these words. This video is sponsored by JLC3DP. Let's scratch to this project. So as a thank you to JLC3DP for sponsoring this video and being my first sponsor ever, I made their name into an LED right here, which is actually so cool. Let me tell you what they do. JLC3DP, your destination for cutting edge 3D printing and CNC machining service. At JLC3DP, they leverage the latest in 3D printing technologies to bring your ideas to life. Whether you're in needs of SLA, MJF, SLM, FDM, or SLS printing, they got you covered. You can choose from a wide array of industrial grade materials, including plastic, metals, and resin. With their extensive materials option, you can find the perfect fit for your project's requirement. And with their efficiency processing and competitive pricing, you can trust JLC 3DP to deliver expectational results without breaking the bank. Fast turnaround times and transparent pricing ensure that your projects stay on schedule and within budget. You can check out JLC 3DP down in the video description below. And now back to the video. I ordered parts from JLC 3DP. Look at this. Very nice packaging. Very nice top packaging. And look at the parts. I think more parts are in here. And the last part, that's of the box. These parts that I ordered are made differently. I will show you each one of them. Let's get the first piece. So this is my turbo connection piece. This piece right here is printed in SLS nylon. It turns out really nicely. The finish is actually really good. First time I see SLS printing and it looks really cool. Let's get the second thing. Whoa, this one is actually quite heavy. <laughs> It's printed in SML, which is Selective Laser Metaling. And this piece is metal. It's quite heavy, to be honest. This part is heavier than this part. It's really amazing. The quality is nice. This is my screw for my project. And this is printed in MJF, which is Multi-Jet Fusion. And this is also nylon. The quality turns out really good, but we'll see if this part actually fits. The next item. Voila. Oh my gosh, look at this. This part looks crazy cool. You can see through it. This part is printed in SLA. I can't really see the name of it, but I guess I'll try it. So um, stereoleography, I think that's how you pronounce it. It's printed in resin and the quality turns out really nice. Last part is, this part is 3D printed FDM printer and it's printed in PLA. Wow, the finish of this is actually really nice. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. It's really heavy. I think it's 100% infill, which is very nice. Now that I actually think about it and saw all these parts, I feel like I should have um, printed this piece and this because this is actually a lot more accurate. And I think it's way more balanced all around than um, FDM printing. But I think it still looks good. So let's get onto the project today. Let's continue building my turbocharger. Okay, before we get into installing this turbocharger, this is all the items that we needed, but I just need to quickly insert four heat insert into these and then we are ready. Got them ready right here. This actually fits now. Oh, that's so cool. The print quality of this is amazing. Okay, I just need to heat push that. Okay, it's finished. I don't like this cool down. Okay, so I test all of this and the parts that did not fit well was this part. It was about 0.2 millimeters bigger than what I model on Fusion 360. I have to make this tolerance a little bit bigger in order to fit this. And now it actually fits really nicely. So let's go. Let's assemble this. This is, um, as you saw in my previous video, this is the outer shell of my turbo. And this piece is supposed to go here. So let's line this up and let's screw it in. Now we need to put this bearing inside here. It should fit. There we go. It fits way too well. It went through it. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, now it's time for this piece. So this piece here is supposed to go right here. There we go. Locks in perfectly. Now, the next thing that we need to do is fit this hole right in there. And for whatever reason, this bearing only fits on this side. It's very loose on this end, but the other end, it actually fits really well. I should have designed it so that it has a backing to stop the bearing from falling through the other side. Now, we can put this compressor wheel inside here. 
and it's been so nice. Woo -hoo. Okay, and then we need to put this metal part or this screw right here to lock it. Man, it goes so nicely. The screw fits so nicely in there. Just like that. For the last piece is this screw which goes in right here. So that locks in from both sides and this thing does not move. Dude, I tell you, this screw fits so nicely. Oh yeah, that is perfect. Okay, now we just need to cover this part. Put the casting on. Use these to lock it in. And the base part. Interlock it like that. Lock these and one at the back. There we go. It's complete. Man, that looks so cool. Look at that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And now the piece fits perfectly together. Now we just bring over this power supply box, put the feet through these hole, and it should mesh perfectly together. Look at that. So meshing the gear here with the gear here. I'm doing this bigger driver gear to the smaller driven gear because if you do it the opposite way, the small one runs the big one, it's gonna have lower speed, higher torque, but if you do the opposite, it's gonna have higher speed but lower torque. This doesn't really need torque, so it just needs speed, so that's what I'm doing. And over here is the knob of controlling this, so I'm gonna put you guys down. Then I'm gonna power this thing on and see this wheel spin. Oh, this is so exciting. Let's go. The last time I did this, it did not work well, as you saw in the previous video. But this time, it's different. Power on, do a small voltage verse. And look at that, it already starts spinning. Oh my gosh, look at that. This is only like what, 5 or 10%? And it already spin, has so much power now. It's actually blowing. Let's go 50%. Okay, let's just go full power on this. That's 100%. So strong. Oh my god. <laughs> it actually works. Oh my goodness. It actually works. It actually spins without stalling with just little minimum effort. It actually spins. Whew. If you hear the clicking noise, right? That. It's just the two gear meshing. From my design, I think it's a little bit higher. The gear should go up like one to two more millimeters in order to have a perfect mesh. But that's the only noise. Let me put some grease on it. Let me put some grease on it. And let's see how it spins now. Ooh, I think it might even go faster this time. Let me put my ruler under this. Okay, that sounds so much better now, okay. Let's do it one more time. Full speed, 100%. Minimum effort. And yeah, whoo, that turns out really nice. This thing spins really well. Oh my gosh. And oh yeah, that is amazing. I can't believe this actually worked. From the last video, you saw I could not get things to spin at all. Even if I spin this and then turn the power for full power, it doesn't spin. It just, what, stall? It does, it does not work. And so yeah, that concludes today's video of me making a turbo charge. And I actually accomplished that. And once again, thank you to JLC3DP for sponsoring this video. Everything will be linked down in the description down below. And as always, keep on 3D printing.